Hey, this is Sari, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network of Podcasts. Transformers, Golden Mecii. Hello and welcome to the special TuneCast and all things Transformers interview of Tara Strong. I'm your host, TFG and Mike, and joining me is Jenny C., who I know mostly from Earth2.net, the show. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. What have you uh, been up to lately? Um, mostly work-related stuff, uh, to be honest. It's a busy time of season for me. Uh, so, lots of uh, university related reporting um that's about it how about you oh just keeping busy with this podcasting thing this will actually be the i believe the fourth or fifth interview i've done um a while ago i sent out a bunch of uh my, uh, my, my buddy steve who runs the the podcasting network that we have with me um i try like if there's somebody i know that people like and say a, a special, like say Christmas or, or a birthday is coming up, if I can get an interview with that person, I will do it. Sure. Uh, I will, or I will try to. And uh, Steve's birthday last year was in June. I wasn't able to get David K. interviewed until December. Oh, my. <laughs> you know, it, 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 at least it still happened. Um, and then I had sent... Miss Strong, you know, Tara Strong, a message uh, asking for an interview, and I'm thinking, okay, well... Because I was doing Powerpuff Girls research for our upcoming episode of TuneCast, uh, Powerpuff Girls, uh, when we reminisce on that, and I never knew that she was the voice of Bubbles. Never. Huh. And when I first started listening to Earth2.net, and I first heard you on the show, I'm like, wow, she sounds just like Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person to ever say that, but I suppose I can see the, the connection. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I sent Miss Strong a message asking her for, for an interview. And I, after I did the research, and I was like, oh, well, it'd be kind of cool if I did this with, with Jenny, since she is a fan of Bubbles and fan of Powerpuff Girls in general. Yeah, yeah, t- totally. Yes, so that will be the interview that you will hear next. Hello, everyone. This is Michael Blanchard, and I am joined with my friend and fellow podcaster, Jenny C. Hello, Jenny. Today we have a super awesome privilege to interview Tara Strong. Yes, that's right. Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls is on the line with us. Hello, Tara. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, One of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview was uh, coming up on TuneCast as one of our podcasts uh, that we do uh, here on the GeekCast Radio Network. We are going to be reminiscing on the Powerpuff Girls. And I, well, pulling (laughs) research for that show, I realized, I looked at the cast list, I'm like, wait, Tara Strong was the voice of Bubbles? (laughs) Dang, I never knew that. (laughs) Um, So that's one of the reasons why, uh, that you're, you're here with us. Also, um, it's been a couple of months, but Jenny just had a birthday, and I wanted this to be a late birthday, early, it was was supposed to be early Christmas present at the time. Um, for her, because yeah. she is a huge Bubbles fan, aren't you, Jen? Nice. Yes, yes, I am. Big part of a girls fan in general, but Bubbles in particular. Yes. Oh, happy birthday, Jenny! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your current projects? That you know, is there anything that you can tell us that you're currently working on that we might look forward to seeing from you in the future? I think everybody will be real excited about a new show that's happening at Cartoon Network. Network. It's a creation of Gandhi Tarakovsky, who, you know, was a creative of Powerpuff Girls, one of them, or one of the executives at least. And um, this is all from his brain, and it's called Symbionic Titan. Um, and it's, um, it's just a really, really cool show, and the artwork's really beautiful. And I'm not sure when that's slated to start. Maybe if you do a little Google on um, the Cartoon Network Symbionic Titan, you'll see it, but... 
that one's very exciting. Um, I'm actually going to be heading up to Vancouver to start the new My Little Pony series tomorrow. And we're still doing Chowder a little bit, and we're still doing Fairly Odd Parents, some pickups and some, you know, Movies of the Week stuff on that. I'm um, trying to think of other exciting things right now. Um, I guess that's it right now. I'm doing some, you know, fair bit of commercial work, too, and The Voice of Payless and The Bad Girls Club and... And I seem to have stuff every single day, but <laughs> it's been good. Yeah, you stay very, very busy. Yeah. Oh, I know what else. The um, Superhero Squad show, that's ongoing, and people seem to be really liking that show. What are you playing that? Um, there's a, um, the witch, um, Scarlet Witch. Okay. Um, and then um, I want to see like three other recurring characters on that. There's like an invisible woman character, and then there's this little robot that the Scarlet Witch hangs out with, Herbie. Um, oh, I can't remember which other ones I'm doing. I mean, that that show it's like so much fun, and we end up doing like three, four voices in each show. Right, right. Uh, for those of our listeners who may not know that much about you, where did you grow up? I grew up in Toronto, mm-hmm. where I started actually doing all kinds of acting as well as animation. My first show was Hello Kitty, which I did with Cree Summer. I was Hello Kitty, and she was Katnick, which was the bad kitty. So that was there. And we work together all the time now, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, what? Well, okay, well, you just kind of answered my next question. What, what got your voice acting career started, which was that show, would you say, or was there something before then that, that you, like, t- kind of tell us, like, how you fell into the whole voice acting thing. Was it something you always wanted to do, or was it something that you just kind of fell into? Yeah, no, I think I I never really knew that I wanted to do cartoons. In fact, the only one in our business that really knew that, I think, is Tom Kenny, you know, Spongebob. Um, Other than that, we all were actors and singers, and most voiceover people are singers because you need to have a good ear. And... um, I was performing since I was pretty young, and always I always did silly voices, but I didn't know necessarily that I was going to make a career out of doing voiceover until I did Hello Kitty, and then after that had a pretty steady booking ratio before I moved here. So I kind of fell into it, but, you know, not completely off a desk job. It was sort of the natural progression when you're doing acting and singing and improv and stuff like that. A lot of people think, oh, you just get into the room and speak, but... You know, you have to know your acting beats, and you have to be able to play and be silly and try out different characters and different sounds and be creative. Right. Did, um, you know, going back to that, I did read on, I believe it was IMDb, that you did start in the theater. Did, did that experience at all help you transition to voice acting, or was it just completely, totally separate? Well, I think any performing that you do helps you with, you know, other areas of performing and certainly keeps your chops sharp and the theater that I was doing was musical theater, so it was, you know, singing and using my ear, but I would say that voiceover as an entity is a totally different animal, and a lot of times, you know, we'll have some on-camera people come in and really freak out because they think it'll be easy, and they think they know what to do based on other acting experiences, and it really, it really is something completely different. Right, yeah. Which do you prefer, voice acting or on-camera work? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, um, I'd say that I really love doing both for different reasons. Like, um, my kids are all excited because I have a part on Big Time Rush, and they've been really advertising that a lot. I play, like, the hot teacher in one episode, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, man, I wish you were on more of that. So it's kind of fun, you know, for me now and for the kids to see me, and that part's fun. But they love, you know, the Fairly Odd Parents and Ben 10, and they love my shows, too. I mean, I really do love everything. I feel pretty blessed that I get to do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, Jenny, why don't you ask her the next question? Sure. Um, I'm going to be focusing on mostly Powerpuff Girls Relief. Right. Um, and uh, there's lots of years of recording. Um, can you reveal any particular behind-the-scenes moments that were especially memorable? Oh, my gosh. We really had so much fun doing that show. And um, myself and E.G., who played Buttercup, we would tease each other relentlessly. I mean, if they ever decided to sell the tapes of what went on in between takes, it would be pretty crazy. Um, Hmm. I mean, really funny moments for me, like, um, you know, Bubbles can talk to squirrels. And for whatever reason, that meant that I would be putting my hands up to my cheeks and making these cute little squirrel faces and 
Tom Kenny is like, is that how you talk to squirrels? And it's just kind of funny when voice actors do something physical with their bodies because obviously <laughs> it doesn't matter what your faces are doing. So um, that was kind of fun. He's like, does that, does that help you do the... <laughs> I guess so. I guess I need to put my hands up to my face and look like a squirrel. Um, we really laughed just so, so, so much. And Tom was always improvising. And he always had a false start. Like, every single time he said the city of Townsville, he'd get, like, you know, half a line into the sentence and then he'd have to start again. It was like there was all these sort of things that just happened every single time. And me and you were always, you know, being very silly. And Catherine, who played Blossom, was always very well behaved which is funny because that's so her character yeah yeah the sense of fun definitely came through in the, the final product for sure yeah I always tell people if it's fun then you're going to get a better show mm-hmm. yeah what's your favorite memory overall from Powerpuff Girls hmm my favorite Powerpuff Girl memory that's a good question well you know my husband and I actually wrote um, a couple episodes and one of them they ended up doing so that was kind of fun for me to see an idea that we had sort of come to life and um, I loved the musical episodes that we would do and we always whenever we'd go back in we'd sing la 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 that was one of my favorite <laughs> yeah so anytime we got to sing and do some fun stuff that was that was cool um, and I think when Bubbles thought she was Mojo Jojo that was pretty fun for me my nanny came in and she was crying so hard. She was laughing. She was crying so hard. She was like, Dara, yesterday on the board of girls and Bubbles said she was with your junior. And she was just like losing it. She was laughing. It was so fun. What do you miss the most? I'd say I miss the camaraderie. I like it was a really great, solid, fun cast. And I'm, I miss that show a lot. I, I, I wish they could have done more. I mean, I had tons of fan mail. I feel like I get more fan mail for that and for more Teen Titans than anything else. And I think they both had a lot more years in them. And I mean, my kids like to watch it now on Boomerang and there's like no toys anywhere, you know? It's like I think they're kind of missing the boat on a whole new generation of people that would be buying stuff and liking it. And I mean, if you look at something like Hello Kitty that's sustained over years and years, there's certainly no reason why we couldn't do, you know, more Powerpuff Girls and more Titans and I think, you know, the fans really want it, and we we had so much fun. It was just a a tremendous amount of fun. Yeah, because there was that special episode not too long ago that was sort of commemorative, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I mean, I got letters all day on Facebook. I have, you know, probably mostly fans, and they're like, why can't we have more? It was so good, it was so good. I mean, the numbers were really high for people watching the special and then had a whole new resurgence and people liking the show, and... You know, people often say to me, can't we, can't you do more? And I'm like, I'd love to do more. <laughs> Not in my <laughs> hands, but I certainly would love to do more. Was there anything about that show that was particularly challenging as far as work, work goes? Uh, I'd say no. I mean, the only thing that they sometimes have to direct me is that I was too high. Because sometimes Bubbles, when she gets, you know, excited, she talks in such a high register that the director would be like, um, Tara, the dogs in the neighborhood are coming by. And you have to pick it down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> But it wasn't really so demanding or challenging. and It was just fun. <laughs> um, and then one more question. Um, at the time the Powerpuff Girls were on the air, which voice actors in the industry did you admire the most? Hmm. Um, you know, I always have such a soft spot in my heart for Frank Welker. I think he's sustained such a long career, and he really is just such a nice, nice guy. Um, and I, I would say if I had to pick someone that deserves a star on the Walk of Fame for doing voiceover, it's him. And there's a lot of people that can't necessarily sustain over the years, and I think it's because you have to be aware of what's going on around you and the different trends in the industry, and I think he's just one of those people that transcends everything, and I just, on top of it, is just the nicest guy in the world. So I'd say he's someone I always really adored. Um. How were you informed that Powerpuff Girls was coming to an end? And did you think the show could have... Did you think it did everything it could have at the time? Or did you... I mean, you've said that you wanted it to go on, but at the time, was there a definitive ending to the show? Because it, it's been a while since I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, they just sort of tell us at one of the sessions where we know a season's wrapping up and then we're not sure if there's going to be a pickup. And 
I would say they, I, I, I'd say they could still be doing it. I, I don't see, I mean, I would say if they were smart and wanted to make money on toys and purses and backpacks and <laughs> they could still be going. I, I just don't, I'm not sure why they would have pulled the plug when they did, but it seemed to me that we could, like I said, still be doing that show. Yeah. Um, Jenny, I think the next one's next two are yours. Um, you had you had another one, but um. Oh, did I? I maybe my script is different than yours is. Um, over the course of the show, did you ever watch the cartoon back? Did you hear what you sounded like? Um, oh yeah, I love, I love the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> you? Yeah, I always watch that show. I mean, I really love that show. I watch it all the time. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and how easy or hard was it to keep track of which boys went with which character? You have a for that, or? You know, that's not really ever a problem unless it's the audition stage still, because a lot of times for the auditions we'll do um, several different choices, and then we don't remember which one they liked or which one they picked when you get to the session. But by the time a character already has um, an existence and a life, it's, it's, I don't know why, we just don't mix them up. It's kind of like, you know, I remember one time I was doing the um, Rugrats, and this guy drew a really funny drawing of Baby Dill doing some crazy stuff and he gave it to me and I'm like and he did it so quickly and I said how do you do that and he said how do you do what you do and I just went okay <laughs> I get it you know it's just like those of us that work that much it's just sort of by nature that that we can sort of keep them in check you know and I've been on auditions where they're like can you do Timmy on this one from the Fairly Odd Parents and I'm like no Timmy is alive on Fairly Odd Parents so we can tweak it a little bit but each character is you know they're, they're their own entity in my brain once I've created them yeah. we have like well, you sort of compartmentalized each one sort of yeah, yeah. Um, which um, I'm going to skip down one question because I think we've already asked that uh, which voice actors that you have worked with do you still keep in contact with Oh, I see them every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the same, you know, people that you see all the time that work consistently. So we're all friends and we all, you know, get excited when someone books a job because we know we'll see each other. And, um, yeah, I, I see most of my friends in the business at least once a week. Yeah. Just at different jobs or to different studios. Right. You recently were the voice of Sorry Sumdak from Transformers Animated. Did you have to recreate that? Did you have to create that voice, or did you adapt it from other little girls' voices that you've done in the past? Um, uh, she's probably someone pretty new. Um, you know, even if you're doing like a slight variation, like I play, you know, several different ten-year-old boys, so I try to keep Ben ten, you know, older than. Timmy, and then I'll do Terrence, like, on Foster's Home, like, really mean and even gruffer than some of the other characters, so even though it's, like, still me, there's just a, a tweak in it enough that the fans won't go, oh, my God, she's doing the same voice on that. I don't I don't like to do the same things on each show, so Sorry is someone I'd say that I haven't really done, you know, like, obviously, Raven has a very different sound, and um, even Batgirl is kind of lower. She's a little more nasally. She's a little... Younger, I don't think she really exists on any show. Yeah, yeah, it's you know it's funny um, when the uh, oh boy, I just lost my train of thought. It's, um, oh the the Ben Ten thing you mentioned. It's funny when I was doing the research for, for this interview, I'm like she's the voice of Ben Ten. Wow, I never knew that. And during the research, I found a, a a line that said, I guess it's your tagline or something. You're mainly known for doing young boys' voices. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, because, you know, if you're going to hire a real 10-year-old boy or a 12-year-old boy, which would be really risky, you know that stuff's going to change pretty soon. <laughs> and when you're bringing in real kids on a show, you know, you have to deal with school and stuff. So they actually really like to deal with um, adults. And I think for the most part, women can sound more like little boys than men. Because quite often if you hear a little boy talking and they kind of sound like little girls, a lot of them are sort of interchangeable and um, yeah it just ends up happening a lot yes uh, really interesting oh yeah it's very interesting <laughs> tell us your thoughts and experience in attending BotCon because <laughs> so, I'm a big Transformers geek and I've never uh-huh. been, um, and uh, in a in, so what do you what, what is your uh, opinion of BotCon um 
Uh, well, I think it's nice for the Transformers fans because they're such amazing, strong fans of that show that they have their own convention and they really know everything about the show. And I have to say I was overwhelmed by how welcoming they were because I know initially, and in fact, some of the fans told me that they weren't crazy about the idea that there was a human on the show. And then a couple of them kind of guessed that it was going to turn out that Sari was not entirely human. And they said, you know, you just played her so well and so real that we we end up welcoming her, even though the idea of it wasn't something they would or originally liked so the fans for me is what makes it all worth it you know they were extremely welcoming and complimentary um, in general I prefer it not be in Cincinnati <laughs> <laughs> it was a little far for me to go without the kids and I was kind of over the sightseeing thing immediately no offense Cincinnatians but maybe next time we can go somewhere a little more fun or a little closer to home <laughs> if they ever invite me back <laughs> you, didn't, uh, you didn't just attend the one in California last year? No, mm -mm. Really? I mean, I don't always get invited because I'm not really, you know, a Transformer. Um, sorry, was only on that particular run. But, um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't invited. If I had been invited, I'd probably show up. I like I like meeting the fans. I mean, the fans are why we have shows, you know? Do you have a strangest fan experience, whether it be at BotCon or, or Comic-Con or anything like that? Um, there was... A convention. It was, an, I think, anime primarily, but they did have some cartoon people. And a girl asked me to sign her sign her butt. <laughs> 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 That's gonna go up there with one of the strangest. I mean, she had a lovely did butt. You it sign was kind of strange. I did sign it. Yeah, it was a nice <laughs> butt. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, and the last question is yours, Jenny. Uh, what's the uh, your favorite role out of all the voice acting roles that you've done? That's a tough one. I really do have a soft spot for Bubbles. I love doing Timmy from the Fairly Odd Parents. I loved Raven because she was so different. And um, I really loved when I booked the Little Mermaid sequel because I got to sing with the original Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. so that was really exciting for me. I've you know I've had so many that it's really hard. I'm so blessed that I've had so many good ones that it's hard to pick. And plus, if I do make a choice, then the producer's going to get mad that I didn't choose his show, so I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that that was one of the things that I'd read in the research, was that when you met uh, Jody Benson, you almost uh, cried in person or something. Oh, yeah, I burst into tears. She was like, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, I just loved you for so long. I mean, I don't know what little girl didn't want to be the mermaid, but it was it was pretty fun for me. <laughs> All right. Um, so you want to, uh, before we close this out, you want to remind everyone about your upcoming projects, and we would like to thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, so, like I said, we would like to thank uh, Tara Strong for taking the time to chat, chat with us in this special uh, TuneCast uh, All Things Transformers uh, interview. Um, you can catch her on Cartoon Network. What is the name of that new show that's coming out? Symbionic Titan. Bionic Titan. Okay, so thank you very much, Tara. Hang on the line. We're going to get some clips from you, and we will talk to you later. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. Hey, this is Sari, and you guys should check out All Things Transformers with Steve, Megatron, and TFG1 Mike. It's a cool show. We are back, and we just interviewed Tara Strong. Wow, that was amazing. She was really cool. <laughs> yes, she was very cool. Even though it's only like a 20-minute interview... Uh, and, and I asked her beforehand, uh, before we were able to bring you on the line, I asked her how much time she had, and she just, well, obviously, you know, people can't see a shrug in the audio, but, you know, she just kind of like, well, eh, you know, let's just, you know, do, you know, let's just do whatever we can do. Um, so that, you know, that was pretty cool of her. Uh, we actually, yeah, that was really great of her. Uh, she wished you a happy birthday in, in Bubbles' voice, even though you're... I know, that was awesome. I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah, e even, even though Bubbles, uh, or not Bubbles, even though your birthday was a couple months ago, um, yeah. you know, it's just, I'm glad I'm doing this podcasting thing because it's so great to be able to talk to voice actors. I never thought, my wildest dreams, if you told me when I was five, you know, five, six years old back in the 80s, you know, saying that 20 years from now you're going to interview the voice of Lionel, which I did previously on this uh, on on Tooncast. It was like, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> just 
<laughs> you know, shrug your shoulders at somebody like, yeah, oh, okay, sure I am. Uh huh. You know. And, and then you did so. Yeah. There you go. It's it's just great. I actually um, I will go ahead and spoil this now because I already pretty much uh, spoiled. I, I haven't spoiled who the who the interview is with, but when I was thinking up promos for. Because I asked her if she would do some, you know, promos for some of our shows, and she said, "Yeah, sure, fine." Uh, so I wrote out some promos, and I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I love World's Finest Podcast, and this, you know, so I figure, okay, well, I didn't realize she was the voice of Batgirl until <laughs> <laughs> so I did the research. So I had her do a couple of clips um, in Batgirl's voice for Mike and James. Over, nice. sent them to Mike the other night, or uh, uh, by the time this airs, it'll be a few nights ago. Uh, he sent me an email back. He's like, ah, oh, that's just awesome. Thank you so much. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Uh, but, yeah, that was just... Uh, usually when when I do interviews, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get all my geekiness out. That's why we do these intro-outros. So we sure. speak out on the person as we're doing it. Um, you know, and usually after, you know, when I do the outro, I'm like, just basically speak just like, wow, that was so awesome. <laughs> It was. It was, because when she was doing the um, the promos beforehand, because uh, I had already sent her, she 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 just printed it out, I guess, the stuff I sent to her through Facebook, and, uh, you know, she uh, she didn't even, st- she didn't even stop to take a breath on, on the promo. She just switched from Bubbles to Sorry Sumdak, from Transformers Animated to Batgirl to who, it, it, it was like, wow, how do you do that? <laughs> She's been doing it for a long time, so she's a uh, she's a pro. Yes. Um, would you like to let Would you like to tell everybody about your uh, recent uh, addition to the family? Oh uh, yeah, I adopted a two and a half year old cat um, about two months ago. Right, actually, right before my birthday, so I guess you could say he's uh, sort of a birthday gift to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he's an all black, long haired cat. Uh, his name is Weevil which uh, comes from uh, a character from Veronica Mars, which I'm uh, a big fan of. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's here, and he's um, kind of standoffish, so he hides a lot, but uh, he's starting to get used to me and he'll come out. And He loves eating tuna, I've learned, so <laughs> um, that's been my trick to uh, get more contact with him. <laughs> yes, he is the ninja kitty. He, fades he is Easter. very elusive. Fades. Um, I can't hear him stalking around at all. He uh, had a bell, a collar with a bell when I first brought him home that they put on him at the shelter. And uh, somehow, I'm not, I'm still not sure exactly how he got it off, but he managed to slip it off. Um, so now he can, you know, flink around undetected in true ninja fashion. So. <laughs> now, is he, um, he's an inside cat, so is he, did you have him declawed? Oh, no. No, he has all of the claws. Um, I have a scratching post that I got for him that uh, he makes good use of and he's he's not one to really attack the furniture and frankly my furniture is from Ikea and not that expensive so if he were to go to town on it it wouldn't be a big deal um, but uh, he was already neutered by the time I had gotten him he had been adopted once before by another family um, and actually when um, the particular shelter that I dealt with um, has cats that are, you know, when they take them in, they automatically neuter them. So he had that taken care of, but he gets to keep the claws. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I would like to thank you for joining me here on this this little journey of ours, and it's just been a blast. Um, just a little uh, quick uh, administrative stuff. You can find this interview on geekcastradio.com. You can uh, find uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's uh, TFG on Mike. Uh, the show, uh, TuneCast does have a Twitter as well. It's GCRN TuneCast. Um, I don't know if you use Twitter that much, do you? I have an account. I use that primarily for um, making wrestling-related comments. Um, so my, my handle on there is uh, Raffle, R-A-S-S-L-E, writer. Um, so, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not on there super frequently. Um, but you can find me on there if, if anyone's interested. Yeah. Um, we also do have a. Uh, I, I did create a fan page for uh, Geekcast Radio. I'm not exactly sure what the link is. You can call our voicemail number, which is 502 526 5821. Be sure to say what show you're leaving the message for and your name. 
Uh, coming up next on Tooncast, we are going to be talking about, uh, I believe it's the GoBots episode. <laughs> uh, GoBots, Transformers knockoffs. Anyway, um, again, thank you, Jenny. And thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. And we will see you next time on Tooncast. <laughs>